Thank you for taking time to learn about graduate education and the application process. I'll be sharing with you the benefits of graduate education, and then we'll talk about the ins and outs of the application process. This presentation is general enough to apply to most schools that you're interested in applying to, but we certainly ask that you consider Clemson University in the process. Clemson University is a tier one research university. We offer more than 140 graduate programs. Our graduate students consistently rate our faculty as excellent, and we offer a growing, inclusive, and vibrant graduate student community. We also offer several PhD programs, which you can apply to with only a bachelor's. You do not need to earn a master's first to apply to these programs. And we offer Grad 360, which we're real proud of. It is a comprehensive professional development program for graduate students and postdocs, and it gets you ready for the marketplace and your career and your life after graduate school. Why consider going to graduate school? Well, the number one reason is to increase earning potential. There are many jobs that require an advanced degree. So um, in order for you to even be considered for certain jobs, you need specialized training, which graduate degrees can offer. Having an advanced degree sets you apart from the competition from those who only have a bachelor's degree. And what I love about graduate education, it provides personal reward and satisfaction. So it gives you a chance to study and learn about an area or field that you're passionate about and strongly interested in. Funding for graduate school. So as not to incur more debt um, than you need to, there are options that you need to consider when applying for graduate school. And the two most common ways to fund your graduate education are through assistantships or fellowships. Assistantships which vary in their type. It can be a teaching assistantship, research assistantship, or a graduate assistantship. All, all provide reduced tuition, sometimes completely pays for tuition 100%, um, and will provide a stipend in return for a certain amount of hours of work per week. Fellowships are much like scholarships in which there's no work requirement attached to it, so you're, you're awarded funds, to be able to pay for your graduate education. And oftentimes it will come with a stipend as well to pay for your living expenses. So graduate students, ideal graduate student would be defined by faculty as inquisitive, hardworking, persistent, passionate, and open-minded. Notice that on that list is not straight A's or the best GRE scores in the world. Faculty are looking for people who are motivated, who are passionate, who are, who are willing to stick it out and persevere. And so they'll look at your GRE scores, for sure, your, your previous academic record or records, and then your research job experiences and the purpose why you wanna to go to graduate school. Again, they wanna see why, they wanna know that you're motivated, passionate, and will finish what you start. So how do you decide which graduate school to attend? You want to do your homework. Graduate school is all about research, so it starts here. Do your research and find the schools that offer the program that you're most interested in. Be realistic, so you, you don't want to just pick one school. Find as many schools as you're interested in research and find out which ones might be the best fit for you. By, by conducting in-depth research, you want to learn as much as you can about the school, about the particular program, and about the faculty. Are there faculty in that program who are doing research that interests you? Again, find out as much as you can about the program. What are the classes that you'll be taking? How many credits are required for graduation? Um, how long is the program? Find out as much as you can about that program to see again if you think it's a good fit for you and it's going to help you reach your goals. Then once you've narrowed it down to a few schools that you want to apply to or learn more about, start communicating with that graduate program. So. You want to express your interest in the program before you even apply, kind of get yourself on their radar. Um, just an email that you can send to them to introduce yourself and a little bit about you, your background, and why you're interested in that particular program. If you have an opportunity, you definitely want to visit the campus or the program in person. And if you let them know ahead of time, you might be able to have an opportunity to meet with faculty from the program as well as current students, um, and that's where you get a real sense of 
what the program is like, and again, if it's a good fit for you. In your research and communicating, you want to identify faculty that you might want to work with if you're applying to a research intensive program. Are there faculty that have research interests that align with your own? And you want to then reach out to them specifically as well and see if there's any um, opportunity to work with them and possibly even funding. But when you're reaching out and communicating with a prospective graduate program, use wisdom. So use good judgment with establishing lines of communication. Always be professional. Realize that even though your application may not have been submitted yet, you're still kind of selling yourself. You want to put your best foot forward and, and share with them what you bring to the table as a prospective graduate student. And use good judgment as far as how often you communicate. We suggest that you ask questions that you might not be able to find on the website. So if something is clearly stated on the website, those are not the things you want to ask when you're communicating with the program. If they've provided on the website, that's, that's sufficient, but those other things that you can kind of build that rapport and that relationship with, that's what you want to include in your communication. So applying to graduate school, here we're gonna talk about the application process. And these requirements are pretty standard across the board for most graduate programs across the country. So what do you need to apply? Um, the application, transcripts, test scores, recommendations, a personal statement, a CV, and potentially an interview. And we're going to touch briefly on each of these. So the application. The application is typically online. And the best advice I can give you for this aspect is to read all instructions. Read all instructions. You don't want to make an error because you were were going through the process too quickly and made mistakes because you didn't slow down enough. Pay attention to deadlines. So you want to make sure that you give yourself enough time to complete the application and gather all the required materials, including if, if a test is required, um, time to prep and take the test and submit those scores in time for the deadline. So find out what the deadline is and then work backwards to build your um, to build your timeline as far as when you need to get different things done. And then take your time as you're going through the application. Most applications will allow you to save and exit as often as you need to. Okay, transcripts. So transcripts is a listing of all the courses that you have taken with the grades that you have earned. Um, if you have earned your degrees already, it will state what degree you were awarded and the date it was awarded. What you want to find out from your Schools that you're applying to is if they require official or unofficial transcripts and provide them with what you need. You can do this through contacting your registrar's office at the schools that you attended. At Clemson, we require that you provide us tran unofficial transcripts that can be uploaded directly to the application from any institution which you earned a degree. Your transcripts are your transcripts, but you may have a GPA for your major courses that is higher than your overall GPA. If this is true for you, this is something that you want to calculate and then include it in your CV or note it in your personal statement. Test scores. So some programs will require a standardized test as part of the application process. The common tests, GRE, the GMAT, LSAT, MCAT, MAT, um, find out what your program is requiring and then look into and prepare for that particular exam. You can find out if there's a minimum score or preferred range on, on the Clemson University Graduate School webpage. We have the average scores of admitted students. So you can get a feel for what's a competitive score for GRE or GMAT. And utilize resources to prepare. There are lots of free resources out there. There are a few links on this site that you can utilize. Um, Kaplan Test Prep has lots of free resources. They also have resources that you can use and pay for, um, but lots of free resources that you can utilize. And there are lots of apps that you can use. We, we have come across Magoosh apps, and they're pretty good and, and easy to use when you just have a few minutes to, to study and prepare. Um, you can just pull up the app on your phone and use that time to prepare. Another note about test scores. So the GRE is a pretty common required test for graduate education, graduate school. They have a new fee reduction program that's worth checking out to see if you qualify to get a reduced rate for taking the test. Definitely worth checking out because the, the GRE and all the, the standardized tests um, can, be, can be a little bit costly. Now, you're also going to be asked to provide a few recommendations, and these are really important because this gives the program information they need to get a fuller picture of who you are and what you would be like as a student. So your standardized test scores and your grades only give part of the picture. 
but the recommendations can speak to the motivation and the passion and the grit, the perseverance that you may have, those leadership skills and other things that are a little bit harder to quantify through test scores and transcripts. So choose your recommenders wisely and know that this is an important piece of the application process. Typically, you'll be asked to provide two or three recommenders, letters of recommendation. And who should you ask? First, before you put somebody down on the application, you want to ask them first if they would be willing to write a letter of recommendation for you and even ask them if they can write a strong letter of recommendation for you and give them an out. If they don't feel that they can, then it's better to move on to somebody else. You don't want somebody who's going to give you a weak um, or lukewarm letter of recommendation. And, and trust me, it happens. Make sure you give them enough time. So don't ask them to be a recommender and say the deadline is tomorrow. Give them at least a couple weeks to be able to take care of this. Give them a copy of your resume and information about the program that you're applying to. So maybe they can customize it and also refresh their memory on some of the things that you've accomplished. And make sure that you thank them um, afterwards. Make sure that you send, send them a thank you note or thank you email because um, recommenders are asked to do this. Your professors um, and others are asked to do this quite a bit. It, you will also be asked to provide a personal statement or, or a statement of purpose. The personal statement is the opportunity where you're going to talk about why you want to pursue the particular program that you're interested in, what your research interests are, how you're a good fit for the program, and even why you're interested in that particular school. Um, most important, you want to read the instructions to answer the questions that they want you to address. Make sure that you proofread and even have somebody else proofread your essay so that there's no errors in it. You want it to be professional and a strong essay. Here's where, again, you can highlight and um, draw attention to your strengths and your grit, and your motivation, your passion for the, the discipline. Um, it's also a place where you can address any shortcomings in your academic record. So maybe your GPA isn't, isn't the strongest as strong as you would like it to be. Well, um, here's a chance where you can address those and you create the narrative. So you don't have to go into too much detail, but you do want to kind of give a little bit of background as to why there might be some blemishes in your record so that you're creating that narrative and giving the information to the review committee that they need so they're not having to try to guess and figure it out. If you can tie it in to your interest in the program, you know, maybe you had a difficult semester because of um, a loved one's illness, and that's why now you want to pursue bioengineering. That's a great tie-in. You, you want to be genuine with it. You want to write with integrity. But if you can tie it in with integrity, that's a great thing to do. Personal statement demonstrates your communication skills and your writing skills. So um, you definitely want to Make sure you put your best foot forward with that and take your time with it. Your CV or your academic resume is also going to be required. And so this would include schools that you have attended, degrees that you have earned or will earn, achievements that you've accomplished, awards, recognitions, publications, research experience, organizations that you're a member of, any leadership opportunities that you've had, you're going to highlight. And if you're coming straight from undergrad, the review committees understand that you may not have had as much work experience as someone else, and that's fine. You're highlighting your academic uh, achievements. Always use a professional font. We have seen CVs come in on with Comic Sans, and that's not the most professional <laughs> font to use. Uh, make sure, you, again, you're selling yourself. You're putting your best put, foot forward in this process. And then you may be asked to participate in an interview. This may be online or it might be in person. Um, this is a great opportunity to set yourself apart and again, highlight those aspects, your strengths and those aspects about yourself that give them a fuller picture of who you are. Again, your, your grit, your motivation, your passion, your interests in the, in the field that you're applying to. Be prepared with questions and be yourself. It's a conversation. So one tip is to take a look at your own resume and kind of refresh yourself on the accomplishments that you've had. And then the day of, just take a deep breath and do the best you can. If it is an online interview, you definitely want to practice with the technology. If it's Skype or, or what have you, practice with the technology so you don't have any technical glitches and you feel comfortable the day of your interview. Be conscious of your background. 
right? You Again, you want it to be professional and choose a quiet place with good internet, low distractions, um, and dress professionally. And you might be asking yourself, what can you do now as an undergraduate student to prepare for graduate school? Co-ops and internships are a great way to get experience and to see if the field that you're thinking about for graduate school is the field that you could see yourself working in. If you have summer research opportunities like an REU, those are great opportunities, great things to put on your resume and your graduate school application, and again, a chance to explore a field that you think you might want to pursue more seriously. Study abroad and any undergraduate research experiences go a long way in getting you ready for a graduate school. And once again, we ask that you consider Clemson University for your graduate education. We know that graduate school is all about fit. We may or may not have the program that you're interested in, but as you're searching, we ask that you, you consider Clemson. We would love to have you here as one of our graduate students. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at grdapp at clemson.edu, grdapp at clemson.edu.